face look amazing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was that was what started our our hangout being public. Um, well, we're clearly here to talk about a book in a very serious manner. We have some wine um, or beer. Some beer. Um, I'm pulling out my phone so I can check the parts that I highlighted. Oh, oh my God. God. Me too. Oh, oh yeah. Also. Yep. iPhone and beer are crucial. Yep. Like reading. <laughs> <laughs> the iPhone and beer book club. <laughs> I just have a soda that I stole from my office. I don't have. It. Cool. It's like the scene in Magic Mike where he's like, "How many Pepsi's are in your bag?" <laughs> Wait, why do you remember that scene? It's at the very beginning of the movie before any of the skipping happened. Oh my god, I remember that scene because I've seen the movie twice. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can you actually I'm jealous? I want to see it again. Yeah, I want to see it again. Can you explain what happens with Tarzan really at the beginning of that movie? Sorry? Can you explain what happens with Tarzan at the beginning of that movie? Like that dude who plays Tarzan? He and, like, like passes out and gives the kid his big break. <laughs> yeah. This has been haunting me since we but saw he, it. He's really crucial. Oh, hey. Jeez. Like he he drinks the whole bottle and then that makes him pass out. Oh. I'm like a scholar of magic. <laughs> 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 Writing my dissertation on <laughs> my really specific plot points. No, actually the first time I saw it I did I had to pee and I missed the whole scene where they ride the boat out to the island because there was a really long line for the bathroom. So, totally worth $15. Crucial. Yeah. Crucial. Yeah. A really crucial scene. You got to see Zan's high school classmate in her bikini. Oh, my God. <laughs> Favorite high school classmate. Hey, you went to high school with her? Yeah, oh, yeah. Absolutely. No, wait. Okay, so um, everyone is like, Everyone thinks that this girl is like a bad actress or something. I thought she was fine and like perfect for the role. Dan's gonna punch you now, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not true. No, I think to be fair, I don't think that that role had like a lot going on. I don't think she was given a lot to do particularly. Um, but it yeah. also happens that like I don't know. We like made out with the same dude in high school, and now she's like a famous actress making out with Channing Tatum, and I like live in New Haven, so I might have some feelings. Um, you make out with Channing Tatum, like, it's not like life is over, you know, there's going to be plenty of opportunity to make out with Channing Tatum <laughs> down the line. Somewhere down, it's true, well, mm, it's first you have to divorce his wife, <laughs> then you can make out with him. I can star in a major motion picture, Miranda, I'm just saying. Who or you can star, sorry, or you can star in a major motion picture. <laughs> I'll just star Channing Tatum as my love interest. <laughs> I'm about a book now. Yeah, let's talk about a book. Oh, sorry, book. Right. No, I'm, I would happily talk about Magic Mike forever. I have a lot of feelings about it, obviously, Magic but like. Magic Club. <laughs> <laughs> not Magic Mike Club. Mm. Next time? Next time. Next time. Magic Mike Hangout. <laughs> um, okay, so um, what did you guys think of Fleur Talbot, our, our narrator, Fleur Talbot? Because um, Ruth and I had really different. Anyway, what did you guys what did you guys think what did you make of her? Like you like her? Some question, but like <laughs> I really like her, with her. I be friends with her. Wait, say that again, Nas? I really like her, but I don't know if I'd want to be friends with her. That was exactly how I felt. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, I felt like she like she was totally entertaining to read and like I don't know, yeah, they were like it was like oh snap moments, like a million oh snap moments. But at no point was I like, you seem like a very good friend. <laughs> you know, I have very many female friends, except for like that really old woman and the wife of the dude she's sleeping with, Dottie. Who she kind of hates. Yeah. Yeah. She just, she just like does not seem like a particularly good lady friend. Um. um I don't think she do that much either, though. She makes fun of all the men like that she ends up being involved she's with. She's nice to Solly. Who she is not boning. That's right. Polly. <laughs> the one dude. <laughs> she was like the perfect artist in that like she or like and writer in that she like trusted no one but like hung out with everyone. <laughs> yeah. She yeah, she turned a really caustic eye on absolutely everyone, um, except that old lady and herself. You know, she's she sort of 
didn't examine herself very critically at all. She just sort of loved herself and trusted all of her impulses. Um, <laughs> which is, I thought of Tracy Flick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, like, I did not think of that, but that's actually a great... I did not think... She was just so efficient and, like, never tired, and she was always going on her way rejoicing. <laughs> I mean, she just yeah. always went on her way rejoicing. <laughs> she also never doubts that she's right. Like, there's never a moment where she's like, maybe I did steal these people's lives. Um, well, like, maybe I shouldn't have written these awful things to, like, inspire these people to do even worse things to each other. Okay. Yeah, that, that leads us to another uh, sort of concern about the book. I don't know, when I, when I first read this book, I was like, oh, it's good. It has a lot of well-observed, great lines. You know, it has a lot of funny zingers, but it's kind of a trifle, right? It's just sort of a, like a, like a frothy, like mildly high concept, like British mystery novel. And then I read it again, and I was like, wait, what actually happened? <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah. I was wondering that also. Yeah. Um, cause I, yeah. Do, do you know what actually happened? <laughs> <laughs> do you know? Did you talk to Muriel Spark? <laughs> Wait, is this real? real? And I channeled the ghost of Muriel Spark, and we did a Ouija board, and um, no, I think, you know, it's one of those ones where you're meant to keep wondering about it or what I should I should be more specific about we're talking well actually I don't know because maybe the one person who's watching this hi um <laughs> will like not want spoilers or something but I don't think it's really a spoiler to say that it's about like it's about someone who's writing a book and who is either inspired by the people and the circumstances in her life to create characters or who miraculously ends up writing a book that coincidentally turns out to predict the events of the future. So, yeah, I don't, and I don't, I don't know which it is. I don't think I actually read it closely enough either time that I read it to say which one of those it is, for sure. I found that, like, I, I started getting bored with the, like, the, the, the kind of, like, idea that the plot of War Under Chase was mirroring the plot of these people. And, like, the parts that I was actually interested in were the parts, like, about her life. Yeah. And, like, the, like, weird one-liners where, like, there are just, there are so many where, like, she, like, has a drink with the guy in the bar and he's like, yeah, whatever, I could write a novel, I guess. <laughs> or, like, when she's having sex with a guy and she's thinking about Charles de Gaulle because she doesn't really want to think about it and, like, her, like, the inside of her brain was so much more interesting than, like, the implications of the novel that she wrote. Oh my god, I know, because her novel's, like, bad and boring. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I skimmed it every time that there was, like, a long section of text from, like, her novel within the novel. I just thought those parts were not. But, yeah, the parts where she's, her attitude about sex in general, I'm going to get, I'm going to get my <laughs> <laughs> I hear you from the last question. I'm on beer number two, by the way. I, while my computer was restarting, I was like, I deserve a second beer because this Google Hangout is really, really difficult. <laughs> I made oh, I am in a row, so I wouldn't have to get up. That's what Mark Lincoln there. <laughs> That's amazing. Nothing's so much better prepared for life than any of us have <laughs> ever been. <laughs> this is also my second beer that I had to get up and get, like, after I finally got my computer to <laughs> Google Hangout. I like your room. Is that your room? There's like uh, two on the walls. Uh, this is my living room, actually, which, because I live alone, has taken on the like 13 year old girl quality that everything in my life has. So it's like collage awesome. with photo booth really? pictures. Actually, right here, you can't see. Room, a living room and a bedroom, and they're both her, her own. <laughs> New Haven. Yeah. <laughs> when you live in New Haven. Um, I will briefly point out that just behind me, uh, what you can't really see is my Hanson poster. <laughs> but I got what I saw them in October. Anyway. Um, October of this year? Last uh, year? Well, of 2011, yeah. Wow. Dedication. <laughs> um, but I, like, I don't know, I, like, want, I don't want to, like, totally derail us with more conversations about, like, weird things from my life. Um, no, no, that doesn't count as, this isn't, like, you know, English class. It's <laughs> Um, well, in that case, let me give you a tour of my wall. <laughs> um, 
No, but I also, like, I don't know. I, like, cause I like, really couldn't figure out how it was supposed to work that, like, War Under Chase is, like, a really not engaging novel, but, like, Loitering with Intent is, like, such an engaging... It's, like, so fun. It's the exact opposite of, like, like plot-heavy sort of, like, you know, trying to prove a moral War Under Chase. Like, Loitering with Intent is, like, the most trifle of a thing. Um, and I don't... Like, I... I don't know, I, like, didn't know, I didn't know what to make of that in terms of, like, this idea that, like, Flora is so clearly in love with her own creation, which is, like, not a terrific thing and, like, gives up so much of her life and, like, doesn't care about men or, like, female friends or, like, other jobs to, like, write this thing, um, which isn't very good. And, like, I don't know, yeah, is in love with a thing that isn't great. Um, is this a good time to like, talk about... Oh. Yeah, no, go ahead. Talk about it. Uh, I was going to say, is this a good time to talk about Fleur Talbot and Hannah Horvath? Yes! <laughs> Let's talk about Hannah Horvath. <laughs> we always, always do. We, I like, it's like there can't be anything with any, like, young, ambitious female protagonist that will ever, again, not get compared to girls. No, I'm fine with that. I guess that's fine. I guess it also, it annoys me, too. The oh. world, you know, we're just living in it. Yeah. And, like, we can't even go to Cafe Grumpy because they're shooting there. <laughs> I have to say, like, I saw Magic Mike and I was so pissed off about this girl being in it. I was like, oh, I can't, like, enjoy, you know, artifacts of, like, ridiculous artifacts of culture without, like, seeing my high school classmates. And then I remember that I, like, had not gone to high school if we'd have done them, and I should be really grateful for that. <laughs> like, I'm sure all of her classmates are just like, oh, seriously? <laughs> not that I, like, I think she's great, obviously. Um, I, yeah, no, she's, she's great. The show's great. It's so great. It's really good. I hope it ushers in, like, an era of, you know, like, in a few years, there will be things that are like that and sort of depict, like, the reality of sex and the reality of women's lives and, like, actual friendships in the same way, like, books, movies, TV shows, cultural artifacts, whatever. And, like, you know, they won't always inevitably be compared to girls. Um, but, not, but not yet. <laughs> but in the meantime, Logan, <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, well, I didn't, I don't want to compare it to girls, but she's just this young woman who's obsessed with the idea of herself as a writer, and that made me think of girls. But we can talk about that just as a fact without. <laughs> well, I feel like, like, I was so impressed by her. Like, she was, like, kind of self-aware and, like, working hard and, like, having plans in a way that, like, no, like, character of a, a lady writer, like, in this day and age has. Mm-hmm. Like, like, we had talked about this. But just that, like, Hannah Horvath, like, as much as she's, like, ambitious and, like, also willing to give up relationships for what she does, like, never pitches anyone anything, but, like, doesn't yeah. appear to be trying to get her writing out there. So I'm just looking for this, my favorite quote in the book, which is when Flora says, the flu is a wonderful opportunity to get the book finished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, miserable in bed and, like, writing her novel. <laughs> or the, um, the scene that's sort of earlier on where um, her friend, her, like, quasi-friend who she doesn't really like, her, who is her boyfriend's wife <laughs> comes to visit her and she they have a fight and she makes a big show of tearing up the pages of her novel yeah. um, that because she's been accused of being like insensitive and only and unwomanly and only caring about her writing and then she um, she falls asleep sleeps like a baby and the next morning she wakes up tapes the pages of her novel back together and just like continues <laughs> like you know yeah, she also, so I have the quote open here. She, like, melodramatically shouts at Dottie when she, like, leaves her apartment, get out, you and your husband between you have ruined my literary work. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I think it's supposed to be satiric. I don't even know, but I, I think it's a self-aware drama queen. But, like, like yeah, it, it's weird because I, I feel like the reason that this book is in still read or maybe better known is because it does have sort of like tone problems, right? You're like, am I supposed to read this as very serious or like is it is is everything here meant to be satire? Like it's not and it's and it's really not clear. And like that's that's a problem, you know, in the book. But um but I love that about it. I love I love this flawed book. Like I I feel like if it had been more consistent, it wouldn't have succeeded at capturing all of the sort of 
like the the weird little day to day realities of her of her life in her you know in her bed sit having her day job like sleeping with a gay dude who <laughs> <laughs> just totally not care. <laughs> No, okay. I see. I see the Hannah Horvath. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that one's like right there for you. <laughs> also, oh, I was just say we'd appear to have lost Miranda, but Miranda. Yes, has back. Yep. Hey, sorry. Miranda. I like that joyous little ping that it makes. That's one thing Google Hangout has going for it. <laughs> it sounds like a nail on a wine glass. It's like this dull kind of ping. Totally. Yeah. Um. Okay, well, I guess I guess we're done. I guess that's it. Um, <laughs> is, there, is, is there anything else that was like? I mean, I know I know it's a it's a little different than other books that we've picked. I wanted to do something that was more that was like a little lighter for summer. Um, yeah, it was. Re- I thought it was really fun. It reminded me a lot of at least the experience of reading it. Reminded me of when the first time I read The Dead Avocado. Um, <laughs> That's so interesting because I'm just now reading um, The Old Man and Me um, by Elaine Dundee, and I feel like those that book is really similar to this book, actually. I, it has I that haven't read that like, one. She's, she's just really mean to everyone. <laughs> um, I really yeah. just missed that avocado. How do you think that they're similar? Well, I just... I mean, maybe it was because... Like, sort of these historical novels, somewhat historical, and just sort of self-obsessed young women characters um, who are just sort of delightful. Um, I think the problem is that Nosley and Miranda disagree that um, Sally J is delightful. (laughs) I'm totally with you. (laughs) Uh, No, I'm with you on this. And I, like, yeah, I totally see. And I think actually read in that light, like, become, like, uh, loitering with intent becomes far more satirical, right? If, like, you're, if, like, can you sort of compare her to Sally J with, like, no particular, like, you know, goal or reason to be doing yeah. anything with you guys, aside from, like, wanting to be in Paris? Um, like, I was just now, I just pulled out a couple of quotes that um, struck me when reading this as funny, um, but then, like, if I think about an actual human saying any of <laughs> would be so annoying. <laughs> yeah. Are we all still here? I don't know. I just had to reload. Yeah. Okay. I just had to reload. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I rejoiced in seeing people as they were, and not only that, but more than ever, as they He just loves knowing people better than they know themselves. And then at some point saying... But you guys all just froze. Oh, so yeah. It was a frozen, frozen moment during that. <laughs> Sorry. It was, it was very, that was very weird. Yeah. Logan, are you still are you still quoting? <laughs> Logan, <laughs> we can come back. <laughs> oh, okay. For a second, all I had was not. For a second, all I had was Nazli kind of fixing her hair, and it had the very creepy sensation that I was like. Spying on her. Oh, interesting. How lovely. <laughs> her ponytail to one side when she was mm-hmm. when she thinks someone was watching. <laughs> mm. It's um right now. It looks like I have two. I have two. Logos. Oh, oh no, just one Logan. Yeah. I'm gonna grab my computer charger. Here we. <laughs> Wait, so Logan, can we hear now the, actually what you were just yeah. quoting? Oh, yeah. Um, Wait, and sorry, I had to X out for a minute because my internet connection. Are you quoting from the Dot Avocado? No, I was quoting from this movie. This book, oh, okay. Cause this movie, just a little film. <laughs> um, basically, there were just both quotes about her, like, thinking of herself as a writer first and just, like, being, existing in the world and having experiences solely in order to put them in her books or to put them in her memoirs. And um, 
I just, like, in real life, I feel like that would be so incredibly annoying to know someone like that, but she's so charming. <laughs> I, I do feel like I encounter people like that once in a while, though. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're, we're all writers. We're all like that, right? But, like, not so... Well, you're supposed to lie about it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like you're, you're supposed to be like, oh, yeah, no, that's, that's so selfish and gross and weird and, like, it's really not... And, and it is, actually. Like, I, I feel like there are two varieties of it that I've encountered. And one is the person who's, like, really young, like, maybe still in college, who's just sort of like, well, I don't care if I lose a friend over this essay that I've written. The essay is worth it. And you're like, oh, my God, check back with me in, like, a month and see whether you still feel that way. Like, just sit on it, please. Um, and then the other variety is the person who's, like, a writing professor who, who's like always talking about their process and the work and like ha like participates in a lot of ad hoc workshops. Is this whole thing frozen? I feel like I've been monologuing for a while. So I'm, no, you're I'm good. Listening. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, yeah, and like both and both of those people are just sort of like, it's like, well, a lot a big part of this game is like paying really close attention to, like, other people. So I don't know if being that in love with your own thoughts and ideas really, like, jives with the other piece of it. That's about being a silent, impartial observer of everything that occurs in the world. Quote. There's a really great quote that's like, people often ask me where I get my ideas for my novels. I can only say that my life is, is like that in that it turns into some other experience of fiction recognizable only to myself. Like, I like that she, there's also, there's another quote where she says something like, writing down your life is so annoying because you have to write everything down as it happened. Like, whereas in, with a novel, you only have to write down kind of what's important to the novel. <laughs> really like. Like, she's a novelist. She's not a personal essayist, but the book is a personal essay about her novel. Oh, that's a beautiful way of putting it. I like that. Yeah. I guess that's why this book appealed to me so much. I always, I always really appreciate books that are about being a writer, like, that are, or, or like, except for leaving the Atocha Station. I really didn't cotton to that for some reason. But yeah, like for the most part, I, I just like mostly like any book that is about becoming a writer, even if it's kind of bad. Or has mm -hmm. um, the book is like self-indulgently full of like little epigrams, like like little quotable things that she says about herself. And you're like, you think that to yourself a lot, don't you? Like, <laughs> But it also has those great, like, it, it has great dialogue. It actually does have really good moments of um, like closely observed, you know, ways that people interact with each other that just seem really real and not like not like a stock thing in a mystery. I think I think reading um, the Elaine Dundee book right now, the the old man and me, the one that's it's sort of like the dead apple. I totally recommend it actually if you want to pick it up. It's an, it's also an NYRB um, book, but um, it's like. She is such a good writer, and she has great pacing, but then there are occasionally, like, lines or sentences or jokes where you're sort of, like, you wrote this really, it's, it seems, like, facile, like, written quickly, relying on careworn things. And the language in this book is actually really original. Like, um, there aren't... Um, even her insults are sort are, are sort of original. There's that whole part where she's like describing what makes someone an English rose, <laughs> and, like just like zinging these women who are these like like she she always um, she always notices actually when other people use careworn phrases in their in their speech. She's and she like she's like I knew that she was about to say that um, she was only human. <laughs> just like like. I don't know. Um, yeah, God, what a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think Nosley was right in her initial assessment that, like, she's so fun to read and read about, and, like, you would never want to hang out with her. Like, you never want to know what, like, weird, fictionalized English rose you're going to turn up as, you know, in her 
yeah. who's hanging out with you when she hates you. Like, yeah, exactly. At midnight and, like, feed you tea, but, like, she secretly is going to rifle through your belongings. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I had this conversation with someone kind of recently um, who I, like, at the time just started hanging out with, um, and he was like, can I, like, ask him a question? Like, are you going to write about me? Um, <laughs> I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's very weird. Like, I never thought of myself as, like, a, I don't know. I didn't, like, think of, I didn't think it was like, con- consequential to other people, I guess, like, my writing. Um, like, and uh, it, was, it was very weird to be asked this question to realize like, that I didn't have an answer for it. Um, and so very strange then to, like, encounter Fleur is just like, yeah, I'm going to write about you. And, like, if you don't like it, <laughs> you're probably stupid anyway. <laughs> that's an impossible question. I mean, that's right. like, yeah, like how um, people always want you to promise not to write about them. Actually, like yeah, well, that was the promise that I was <laughs> was extracted from me. <laughs> did it make you want to write about this person? I actually did write about that conversation. <laughs> 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 Um, I mean, like in a, in a like a, a you know, it is like a sentence in a much longer thing. Um, I don't know. It, I, um, it certainly made me think about it in a different way. Uh, but then again, like I, you know, everything I write is like very obviously in the first person, um, whereas Flora is like, I don't. I wish. I guess like if this book had been written now, there would be some discussion of like why the impulse to write this, like, self-justifying personal essay, you know, when you're clearly, like, an obsessive novelist. Um, I think she's right there. questions she genuinely doesn't ask herself. Mm-hmm. Like, she's so, her attitude towards everything is so acquisitive, which is something I find, like, sort of personally repellent, but <laughs> in, a pr- <laughs> in a protagonist, like, is so appealing. Like, one of the phrases that I highlighted, which I, like, just feel like needs to get said is like this conversation that she has with Dottie um, where she, where she's like, was Leslie here last night? My business. I said, my husband said Dottie, he's mine. Why don't you rent him out by the hour? Like what a bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Her husband. (laughs) She's just like, like pretty blatantly sleeping with him and being like, whatever. Like he wants to, that's totally fine with him. Like you need to deal with it. I don't know. It's just like the, the way that she treats, like, people and experiences and, like, phrases, there's this other thing I won't quote from where she, like, like, the little serving boy who works in her apartment building has, like, says something that she likes and she's like, I will take it. Like, <laughs> I will take it for myself. Like, I like this phrase. Um, she just, like, has no shame or self-doubt or, like, she, like, never questions she's going to finish her novel. If it's bad, she never questions she's going to write a better one. Like... I think the question is amazing. Well, I mean, I I think it makes her seem crazy because of um, when the book is set and also when it was written. And it's like uh, someone like that, a character like Fleur Talbot or like a human being like Fleur Talbot is like only now, right now, like right this very minute, right now, starting to seem not entirely crazy. Like if someone like that existed right now, you would be like, you would be like, oh, well, high maintenance friends, but you wouldn't be like total bona fide lunatic who I'm going to avoid at all costs because she's just living outside of the bounds of society, you know? I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm drunk, but maybe, maybe I'm extrapolating a little bit too much, but like, I, I don't know. I guess that was what intrigued me about this book, the sort of like how someone could become how someone could go from being, how a character could go from being like an over-the-top satire to being a totally plausible like, human being yeah. that you would know. <laughs> so, she either said this two or three times, I, but where she just had this moment and maybe she rejoiced or reflected, I can't remember the word, she totally, of she totally rejoiced. Being, being a woman and an artist in the middle of the 20th century. Oh, yeah, she loved and it. She said yep. that, like, several times, and yeah. she's, like, so self-satisfied with it. Um, and I just, I thought it was, like, annoying. But then also, gosh, like, how many women could say that about themselves 
at that point, like, and have anyone else listen to them or believe them. Like, did you guys, did you guys watch the? I'm not really changing the subject, but no, change. The, um, I'm not at all. I'm really not. Um, did you guys watch the uh, Marina Abramovic this documentary? Oh, it's on HBO. Is that the artist is present, right? Yeah, yeah. I did not see it. Tell us, tell us about it. Yeah. Did you guys? Did you see the the show that was at MoMA? The no, I did not live in New York then. I wrote. I read about it. I read some articles. <laughs> yeah, I read a lot about it. Um. Um. I really. I. The documentary is a little weird in many ways, and it's like, well, like it's a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> it has, like, music that tells you how you should be feeling. <laughs> but um, I really, really recommend it, actually. Because um, she's just so incredibly amazing. She's also a person who just has, like, total unshakable conviction in, like, her right to just do whatever she deems necessary for, like, her art. And, like, when people, when you know someone like that, when they're like making bad art or like making no art, you're like, you user asshole. <laughs> like, how do you, you stupid, like, you know, pointless person? Like, how do you, like, like I'm, you know, my, my, um, my good friend's um, boyfriend's ex boyfriend who she was with when we were like both 22, who was always like, lying on her couch and, like, rolling his own cigarettes and, like, dictating bits of his, like, weird um, steampunk novel to her. It's like, fuck you, dude. But, <laughs> like, um, what if you're right about yourself? What if you're a genius? And this is, like, a gamble that this, that this person took under, like, the most oppressive circumstances imaginable. And she was like, I'm going to make this crazy art and I'm going to, like, and I don't, care if anyone thinks that I'm, like, insane, you know? I don't care if anyone, like, wants to institutionalize me. And now, like, 40 years later, you know, like, everyone wants to kiss her ass. I guess, Including, yeah. like, you know, James Franco, and, like, she wears all these, like, designer clothes and is rich, you know? And it's, it's sort of, <laughs> I don't know, it's a, it's a confusing... I don't really know where I was going with that. <laughs> well, that's the thing about any artist, right? That, like, an artist is someone who asserts that the things that they're making is art. And, like, sometimes those things, it's like, no, you're just sitting in a room for a long time. And sometimes it's like, no, that's just, like, a picture. Um, and it's, like, irritating when the work is bad or when it's, like, a kind of blowhard, like, douchebag, mostly man. Um, but it's different when it's, like, like Flora Taba, I guess, is an example of someone who really asserts that she's an artist. And you're like... Well, you're kind of a jerk. But I guess, like, anyone who asserts that their work is art is art. And it's just, like, different when women do it. Like, it's normal for a man to be like, I say this is so and it is so. And it's different when a woman, like, asserts and is really confident that their work is good. It, like, makes you uncomfortable. Yeah, you, you're much more ready to leap to the conclusion that there's something wrong with that person. Yeah. Even still, you're like, well, that person, it's so sad. Like, she's delusional. Like, she thinks that she's making art, you know? Um, but I was so I, I wish that were the case, but it just it, it just is like e like even for me, I have to like reexamine my prejudices all the time because I'm like, you know, duh. Obviously, I'm like all for women making art, but I'm but I'm you know it's I don't know. It's just like there's so much internalized. Um, sorry to get into like <laughs> weird like women studies things, but like there's so much um, internalized. Um, like it's a combination of self hatred and like and just like internalized misogyny. It's like part of everyone's like consciousness. It's like it's really hard to get away from it. Like it's it, you know I mistrust anyone who thinks that they have actually transcended it. Um, that's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I couldn't get off my mind when reading Loitering with a Tent was the fact that like the book would have been totally different if the internet existed. Like, the characters are constantly, like, having downtime or, like, having nothing to do with write their novels. 
Or, or like, like or or like her, her poor novel, right? Like there was yeah. only a copy of it and it was stolen. Interesting <laughs> 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 plot line. Like totally archaic. To be fair, yeah, actually, it's a plot line of fornication. Really? Yes. He like typewrites his novel and he gets carjacked and it gets it stolen. It could still happen. <laughs> yes, Miranda? No, this could still happen. There are some authors who still type everything on a typewriter and then they have one copy and then they give it to their publisher and, like, it could be stolen. It could happen. I was thinking about the logistics of this. Also, like, the proofing process. Sorry, these are my thoughts because it's my job. <laughs> um, it did actually happen wait, on an episode of like, Sorry. Sorry. I'm oh, no. TV. Oh. <laughs> um, Miranda, like, tell us who does this. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, I said, oh, oh, Louise Glick. Still only uses a typewriter. Um, I have, we have some new poems of hers, which maybe it's the only copy. Who knows? Maybe she actually typed them twice, which is what she would have had to do, or like Xerox them, I guess. Could you say Xerox machine? <laughs> I, did, um, I did one of those letters for the rumpus recently and I hand wrote it and I was so paranoid that it would like get, I, cause I just like sent them the like the thing that was handwritten and I was so paranoid that it would get lost that I like made a Xerox and then I was like oh my god. like it's not, oh my god my deathless art <laughs> 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 um, and also like I'm totally gonna like the next time I clean off my desk I'm gonna be like what is this shit and like put it in the paper recycling but um Anyway, I'm sorry, what were you, what were you saying? Um, oh, I just think, like, Fleur would have been a much less, uh, like, efficient and or independent human if the internet existed. Like, she kind of existed Wouldn't in the we all? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think there's something to that. Um, that, like, one of the things that, like, drives her forward is her sense that she's, like, doing the important work of, like, the woman and the writer in the 21st, or the 20th century. Um, and that's probably in certain ways you're, like, I'm isolated and I'm motivated and, like, everyone else is stupid. Um, <laughs> and, well, in some ways it's really easy to feel like everyone's stupid when you're on the internet. Like, in some ways, every day you're inundated with other people writing stuff that you respect and you're, like, oh, Jesus. People are already saying it. Someone's going to get around. Like, all the time I read something, and I'm like, oh, someone else is going to get around to writing about that. Like, I don't need to contribute my, you know, take on whatever this is. Um, oh, my God. I feel like that, too. And maybe it's like, you know, watching someone get mugged, and you're like, well, someone else. <laughs> but, but what if the person who intervenes is really incompetent? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where's Logan? I feel like I haven't seen her in a while. I'm here. <laughs> okay. Wait, I, I feel like you were trying to say something and then I cut you off, but it was like three people being on the screen ago or something. Oh, no, it was something that was about a television show and it's not important. What television <laughs> show? Um, it, was, it was just on Revenge. That was a plot line that someone had a one type of manuscript and his house burned down. On purpose. Honestly. Yeah. I think we've all learned an important lesson here. And it's backups. You need at least another Xerox of your manuscript in a separate location. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know how Louise Buck sleeps at night. I I like put that shit in Dropbox and like email it to myself and like <laughs> you know, just in case everything in the world catches on fire. Like that shitty thing that I just wrote in space. <laughs> I have everything in Gmail, so when Gmail decides to not let us access our things anymore, then I'm in trouble. That would be 15 cents, Logan. 15 cents per document <laughs> that you download. From, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, Google, thanks for benevolently allowing us to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Does Google own this conversation? Is that how this works? I think they do, yeah. They can, like, use it to advertise Google+. Plus. They can be like, <laughs> look what people are doing on Google+. Plus. They're drinking wine and talking about a book by Muriel Spark. I don't think that I would be tempted to do that. But, um, so, so we're all prepared for that eventuality. Mm -hmm. um, well, okay, do, do we have any other um, 
as long as we're like meeting like this, do we have any other like concerns or questions or anything that is relevant to like this book or any other book or any other book? <laughs> any other book that has ever been written or <laughs> ever yet? Yeah. I have some concerns about other books. <laughs> <laughs> okay, valid, yeah. I don't know. What you, well, what are you guys all reading right now? Like, right. I found the last month's Emily Books book today. I don't remember the title. <laughs> the one before this. <coughs> I'm like, it'll come to me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, last month was um, one, oh, more. Uh, one more for the people, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I finally did like an interview with her that I'm going to put up on the site um, probably tomorrow. I was just really curious about like what's going on with her now and like, is she okay and stuff. Is she okay? <laughs> yeah, is she worried? She's fine. She, um, she got her adrenals removed and she has like totally artificial hormones um, in her body, but other than that, she's She's okay. Um, and she just like lives in Portland and has like four jobs. Portland. <laughs> it does it does seem like a paradise of sorts. Yeah, it's of sorts. Yeah. So we shouldn't all move there. No, it's depressing. The sun doesn't come out. <laughs> also not not really jobs, right? Which I guess maybe for Trying to be ambitious lady writers might be good, but like, if you want to make rent and stuff, yeah. might be problematic. Rent. <laughs> Whatever to that. What did you just finish reading, Miranda? I just finished reading How Should a Person Be? Oh. Question mark. A novel from life. <laughs> um, Zan currently has my copy. I really lo loved it. I mean, I'm. there's like no way to like do spoilers on this book, I feel like, but even though there, there were some parts at the end I felt like sort of like lost its shape, sort of fell apart narratively towards the end, but I don't know. I feel like all of the parts that like James Wood called out in his review for being like super narcissistic and useless, I was like, oh no, those are just my thoughts though. And I'm like so glad someone else is out there asking those questions. Like these are questions I have about how a person should function in the world and like whether or not my brain works in the same way that other people's brain work, brains work, and I don't know. I recommend it to all of you if you have not read it, and I can get you copies for free. Which I have maybe a copy I shouldn't. Have bought me for free. <laughs> <laughs> in yeah, maybe, maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> or like maybe no, I shouldn't say I that. We had, had thought about making a book club. <laughs> uh, we had thought about making it a book club pick, but then we were like, it doesn't really meet our health. <laughs> like it's like it's good. Like it's got it. Like we we're gonna focus on books that like could. We want people to always be like hearing about stuff first from us if that's at all possible, you know. Um, and this book has gotten like it's amazing. It's gotten like so much hype. So much hype. Amazing. It's crazy. Like how like well received this book has been. I re I really feel like it signals like a like a really big important like shift and change that's happening. I I like I really hope that that's actually what's happening. I think that it is. Like it's, it's like crazy and like super exciting. You got angry at someone on Tumblr about it today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I also I called someone a tool of the patriarchy. Just so righteously though, I read that thing and I was just like, are you? Kidding me? Like, yeah. are you kidding me? I, I, I like. It's been a long time since I've like gotten really angry and like wanted to like really angry on the internet. You know, cause it's like always a bad idea to be really angry on the internet. Like, you have to not do that because it's just like it's this like self perpetuating. You know, and then you, you can't help but pay attention to all the people who are like, no, you are a tool of the patriarchy. <laughs> We're calling another woman a tool of the patriarchy. <laughs> Because that just feeds right into the endless cycle of girl on girl, and you're like, oh, la, la. <laughs> like, no, oh, stop. Um, but yeah, no, I, um, I don't know. It's like a few hours later, and I still think I was right. Like that was some terrible bullshit. I really hate it. Yeah, I, I, I write about like authors' outfits. 
Like they do not write yeah. about male authors' outfits. Like sometimes they write about their hair. <laughs> and like <laughs> but um you were you were serving as the person that like Zan mentioned earlier, where like exactly. okay, someone else is gonna write about it. I guess I won't write this angry thing. Like you were being that person. You did everyone a service. I thought <laughs> about it a lot. <laughs> I was like, well, I really shouldn't do this. And then I did it anyway. You know, I don't know, because I, I had such terrible things happen. I mean, not to make this all to be about complaining. Uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll spare the world, actually. But, like, the world, the one, our one viewer. Um, <laughs> like, um, no, I just, like, I sent book forms, like, my author, like, my, they asked for an author photo, and they, and my editor sent them my author photo, and they didn't use it, and so they used a, like, photo that was a few years old of me um, flipping the bird on a rooftop in a bathing suit, and, like, the review was about me flipping the bird on a rooftop in a bathing suit. It was not about my book, and I just don't want that to ever happen to anyone ever again. Like, I just feel like that is such a fucked up thing to have happened, and it doesn't even, at this point, have anything to do with, like, me or, like, my book. It's just, like, that should not happen to women, like, who write books. Like, that's horrible and fucked. And to imply that, like, I don't know, it's just, it's just really gross. So there's, like, there's no, there's no winning this sort of, like, game of, like, self-presentation. Like, you're, you're just, like, they will hate you because you're pretty, they will hate you because you're ugly, they will hate you because you're thin, they will hate you because you're fat, they will hate you because you're, like, old, they will hate you because you're young, like, they will hate you ultimately because you're a woman, and there's nothing you can do about that shit. Um, this reminds me that I was, just before this started, I was reading the Fiona Apple Rolling Stone piece that you posted on Twitter. Um, <laughs> I remember that that exists, like, every few years, and I go back and you read it. I mean, it's, I, and also I've just been listening to the new album a lot lately, so it's I... so good. But, like, in it, like, in it, there's this whole thing at the end, right, of, like, Janine Garofalo has, like, made this, like... Um, stand-up comedy bit about what? how Fiona Apple is too good. Oh my god! And I feel like I feel like we've all been like both Fiona and Janine in that situation. You know, right. when it's like, oh, but I just thought it was funny, and I didn't think it was like offensive or sexist. I just was being, I was just trying to be funny, and then you're like, you realize that like, oh, maybe she's right. Like maybe the reason, like that that poem is so powerful. Like twenty-year-old Fiona Apple being like, I do have an eating disorder. Every girl in America has an eating disorder. Janine Garofalo has an eating disorder, and that's why she's so upset. And it's like, yeah, out of the mouths of crazy 20-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, there is, I wish that I could remember, and I, like, don't have the wherewithal to pull it up right now, because there is, like, Floor has an author photo taken of her when she gets, like, her first big review, or, like, a second one maybe, like, runs the photograph. I remember, I was just looking at this, it's, like, Floor Talbot in, like, her book-lined home or something. It's, like, taken in front of the bookshelf. Oh, Brooke, oh. In her book-lined, a uh, book-lined study in her town home, I believe. Yeah. Line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know, but like she, I mean, that's just like speaking of like ways in which this book would be written different if, if it had been written in the age of the internet. Like, you know, there would have been other photographs of this. Like, eh, that's like well, one nice should get on that. I mean, someone should probably write that. But <laughs> the like sequel uh, thing of like, anyway, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Loitering with intent on the internet. Loitering on the internet, Jesus. Loitering on the internet, yeah. Did, did all of your reviews say something about how you looked? Did they all comment on your appearance? Um, the Times one did. Uh, the book one, one obviously did. Um, I don't know. I didn't read them all. Yeah. I mean, I read those ones. I read the book form one because it was first and the Times one because it was the Times. But there were a lot of other ones that I, like, actually did prevent myself from 
participating. Uh, you know, um, none of the like, none of the like women who like wrote to me like about how they like were so whatever like they were so into my book, like none of them mentioned my appearance because it was not relevant to their experience with the book. It occurs to me actually, I'm just thinking about like, because like I like definitely recall people talking about you and like how you looked and like um Sloan Crosley and how pretty she is. And like I don't I feel like it's it's she like really pretty and like she she did write an essay about how like she has a big butt and <laughs> it is like but <laughs> <laughs> Well, but, like, I'm just thinking about Karen Russell, right, who won a novel that was, like, nominated for a Pulitzer, and, like, I, I mean, maybe I'm just not reading the right stuff, but I feel like nobody has called her out on being, like, too pretty or too, like, I, I don't know anything about what Karen I actually, yeah, don't have any idea what she looks like. I do, but only, but like, not, idea. right, but only now that I'm thinking about it. And I wonder if it's, I think, I think it is particularly, like, the issue of being, um, an essayist. It's this, it's this assumption that if you expose any one part of yourself or, like, present yourself in any way, it's, like, all of these up for dissection. I mean, it is worse if you write about yourself, but I think, like, you know, um, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, I'm sure there are counterexamples. I just, like, I'm just, I'm just trying to think about, like, other, I don't know, other examples of it. Um, it's obviously, like, not okay either way, but I think it's a particularly pernicious way of, like, belittling women's first person, like, personal expressions, right, is of saying, like, oh, well, if you're talking about yourself, what you must want is for me to talk about whether or not you're pretty. And, you know, it doesn't work. It just, it's not the same for men. Like, I feel like a man's appearance is as likely to be talked about whether he's writing memoir or fiction, which is, like, not very likely. Um, I guess I'm just thinking of, like, books that FSG has published recently, because that's all in my brain, but... Like, Rose Grant's book, um, Paris, I Love You, but You're Bringing Me Down. I don't think any reviews mentioned, like, that he's, like, genuinely an attractive man. Like, he's just, he's an attractive dude. I'm going like, to Google, Google image him right now. I have no <laughs> idea what he looks like. But I totally know what Sadie Smith looks happy. like. There are a million photos of her because she's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> um, and then we're, like, publishing, we're publishing this other book of essays by Davy Rothbart, like, in the fall, I think. Um, and I, like, would bet you that no one is going to mention that, like, he's, like, a leg he, like, legitimately is, like, a hilarious-looking dude, not that he's, like, he just, like, presents himself in a very hilarious way. He's, like, I don't know. Anyway, but I, this is, like, not I mean, material. Lockhart took the stage in, like, baggy pants and a newsboy cap. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, that's not, like, you don't, like, I feel like that's the first place you go when you're, profiling a woman or, like, writing about a woman who's writing a memoir, and, like, you don't do that with men. I mean, it's, like, I'm not denying that, like, our physical, like, being is part of our, like, holistic sort of, like, experience of life and, like, our way of, like, being in the world. I don't think it's, like, irrelevant information to, like, know how someone looks. I mean, I don't think we should all be wearing, like, burkas or, like, those sort of, like, weird, like, attractiveness masks that, like, David Foster Wallace predicted that we would all use to video chat with each other. I just, like... I would like one of right now, though, by the way. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> I kind of to, would, too, especially hair-wise. I don't know what's going on with my hair game, but, like, um, I also, I also just, like, I don't think it's used to discredit men in the way that it's used to discredit women. I think that if women are sexually attractive, um, it's, like, presumed that they don't have anything else to offer, and you kind of have to, like, age out of it in order to be taken seriously. Like, it's more depressing that you can just age out of it. It's like, oh, you hit a certain point, and, like, it doesn't matter, like, what else is going I mean, on. It doesn't it's cool. take long to age out of it. I mean, you just give it, like, give it, you know, two years, and, like, you know, you're a mommy. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I'm sorry. I feel like it's, like, a really self bizarrely self-pitying direction that I took this conversation in and it doesn't really have anything to do with the book and I'm sorry that I did it. Because um, there aren't, like, good answers to this shit. Like, I think, I, I don't know. I thought Sheila Hetty looked awesome. Photo. That <laughs> doesn't matter. Like, 
I would never want her to wear a designer like dress or have like really or whatever. It's just not like her to be any of that shit. Yeah. So like I wanted to only read novels by like Kardashian sisters and I would do that. They've written some. Yeah, but I do wonder a little bit if like there's like a brashness in Ordering with intent that is only possible when, like, you're Fleur Talbot and you're, like, the one crazy woman who's writing like this that, like, is affordable to none of us now because, like, we all know what happens if, like, you know, if we were to, like, go around writing essays being like, yeah, I, like, fuck other women's husbands and, like, lose <laughs> my friends because my art. There would definitely be mean comments, but I think you can, like, claim to, like, whatever craziness you want, ultimately. Like, or you can, like, claim to it, but, like, you get... There's like this, I don't know, this whole like public culture that we and like a lot of our writing exists in. Oh, I just, oh. I'm sorry. I just I just successfully Google imaged Rosencrantz Baldwin. He's very he's got a boyish charm. It's true. Yeah. I'll tell him that. He looks, like, <laughs> he looks yeah. like Ben Affleck, sort of. <laughs> no. Good one. <laughs> Maybe just in this one photo. I don't know. No, but, no. That's like I had never thought of that. That's a good. <laughs> He has the same like like comp title for him as a human. <laughs> um, but you I like, know. You know, I don't know. You don't think that like there's a certain like once somebody's already labeled you crazy, it's like fine, whatever. Like I'm gonna be the craziest person. Whereas yeah, like you, right? You're like, right. yeah, I can be as crazy as I want. Yay, you know. Right. For, I know. I feel like for Fleur, that exists in a way that like it like, doesn't threaten. I don't know her like persona, that like, the person that people thinks that the person that people think that she is doesn't threaten the work that she does, right? Um, even in, like, theoretically writing this, like, essay novel, like, essay about her novel. Um, and that's just, like, not any longer possible for women writers. Um, I mean, because even if you're writing a novel, you have to promote it, right? Like, you have to be the person who's behind it. Um, or, I don't know, not possible, but it's, it's a very different, like, I don't know, that there's a certain freedom I almost, I don't know, I feel like maybe I'm wrong. Um, no, I, I, I don't think you're wrong at all. I just, I just, um, I think there's just like so much more um, courage in not giving a fuck that is um, asked of us when we're like presenting anything to an audience than is asked of like your average to. I mean, obviously, it's always hard to be like, here's my thing. Maybe you'll hate it, but. Um, there's just another layer, like, when women are doing it. You just have to, like, overcompensate by just, like, hypnotizing yourself and deluding yourself so much into, like, really, really, really just profoundly not giving a fuck at all. Um, it's the only right. Way. I think all I'm saying is that I don't feel like Flora has hypnotized herself. So no, like, she not, well, she didn't have to because she's, like, actually... <laughs> Well, but partially that she's, like, who she is, but partially because she just doesn't ever have to face these reactions. There's, like, no way for it to come to her, you uh-huh. know? Um, and so it's possible for her to just live in this world where she's like, yeah, I'm, like, this balls-out artist. I'm, like, who wouldn't want me to be? I love being me. Because <laughs> no one's ever, like, commented on her, you know, blog post because you're doing it wrong. What a beautiful world before the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, anyway... But no, I think it's also, like, but I'm, what I'm saying is, like, you can totally still live in that world. You just have to, like, decide to live in it. Like, you just have to, like, make a conscious effort to, wow, I sound like a crazy person. <laughs> 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 and you just have, you know, you just have to, um, or the wheat from the chaff. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, I mean... I don't know, like, I, I really I really have this, like, deep conviction that the people who ultimately become, like, very, um, like, members of Hanson's band, like, they did not <laughs> ever question whether they were going to become, like... You're like, 11, <laughs> to be fair. I know, that's the kind of confidence that you have at 11. You're like, why the fuck not? Why wouldn't this happen for me? And you just have to try to keep that into your, into your adult life, because, like, the minute you start, like, being like, oh, it will never happen, not for me, like, you're sunk. You have to just, you have to just like, insanely, delusionally believe in it. That's the gospel I'm preaching. <laughs> right? <laughs> Weirdly. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Um, Did you get the idea that Fleur wouldn't have done very well with, like, being friends with any other woman like her? 
she did. She was of a generation um, of really needing to be the only, the only woman in the room, like the only girl who gets like invited to be at the like men's table. I mean, the fictional person, right? And like that was a really real thing up until like so incredibly recently. I kind of think it's still a thing. I was gonna say. I guess it I is. I think the token lady is still a thing. There's like the Nora. Did you see like David Remnick's? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah totally, like, totally. Odd, like um, was it? She talking about Dorothy Parker or Dorothy Parker? Yeah, that like she was the only woman at the men's table, and she's like, no, I want it all to matter. I want there to be a lot of women at the men's table. It's just a table. Yeah. Well, it's just a table. Um, but it's, I mean, it's hard. It's like you have to, you have to like balance like genuinely caring about other people and like paying attention to them, like caring about their opinions with like not being a pushover and like not being stepped on and not like automatically deferring to other people's opinions, which is like what um, most people are like culturally, what most women are like culturally trained to do. So like how do you reconcile that without just being so paralyzed by wondering, like, what you're doing at any given time that you're constantly second-guessing yourself? I don't know. <laughs> I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> it's hard. Um, but, yeah, like, like Fleur, Fleur's craziness is, like, instructive, I think. Like, Fleur's crazy in a really interesting way. She is crazy. Like, she's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like sort of a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you guys read any other books by Mur Muriel Spark? No. Yeah. Me neither. The one that everyone says is good is uh, The Prime of Miss Jean Brody. I know that. There's a movie. Mm -hmm. um, are we... I think we're like done. Do you think we're done? Fish? We're done. Well done. I like oh, today. Well, good talk, right. girl. Well, I'm just gonna turn off the. I'm gonna hit end broadcast, and then we can like privately share. Say bye. Um, bye, Dan. Bye, Miranda. <laughs> bye, Nosley. <laughs> bye, Liz. <Lizzie. laughs> <laughs> it's like a little. Christmas poem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sayonara.